Welcome to this Mastery Empowerment Course from New Earth One Network. This is designed exclusively for your higher self connection and embodiment. Welcome to this episode. We are here with a beautiful star seed way shower, Z Earth Star Healer. And we are talking about the Pleiadian Stargate. Z, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, Loren. It's so good to be back. It's just like being back at home. I was just telling you that you know, I think this journey started for me about three years ago, and it all started when I came on your show. So definitely think about you all the time. I'm just really excited to grow with you. We have certainly seen you grow and you are one that brings great hope to the future because you are deeply connected, you are conscious, and you are assisting others, even those who are advanced in this linear timeline as far as age goes. You are really helping light workers of all sorts and we thank you for that so you are very interesting my dear we're going to talk about the pleiadian gateway but i want to share a little bit about your background you are the andromedan visionary of earth star sanctuary and you are a gatekeeper and a shamanic healer you're also a medicine singer so let's take just a quick moment right now z and have you share your sonic vibrations with us.
Bravo. Z, you always lift us into the highest of frequencies. And that actually awakens our DNA. Thank you for making this <laughs> vibrational energetic connection. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. What a beautiful way to open this episode as we certainly could feel the Pleiadian essence as well. So let's talk about the Pleiadian Stargate. This is something that occurs twice a year and you've had amazing experiences during these gateways. First of all, what is going on here and why is this gateway so important? Yeah, so the heliocentric Pleiades alignment is basically when the Earth, the Sun, and the Pleiades uh, star system come into direct alignment. And this is usually a really great time for star seeds to phone home. Even if you're not a Pleiadian star seed, the star seed mission is so um, embedded, and we've all been into these different places for training and for intel. And so by tuning into the Pleiadian energy, you know, the history of the earth and all of these different Native Americans that have their creation story seated in the Pleiades, you know, from the Aborigines to the Cherokee people. Um, it seems like there's a lot of common history in a lot of these lineages. Um, and it seems like there's been an unfolding story of the evolution of humanity for a very long time. And a lot of that ties into the Pleiades um, star system. And so, um, I find that during these alignments, which happen um, mid-May, so May 20th is like when the direct alignment happens, um, and also in November when uh, the Earth and the Sun are on the other side. Um, I've just had extraordinary experiences in my personal life during these alignments, and this year it just felt like I finally have all the pieces to actually hold this space and open up an opportunity for people to join in on the festivities, so really excited to share all about it. Oh yes, in fact, that is your special offer that you have for our listeners and viewers. So we'll talk about that and what goes on in that ceremony and what makes this year an interesting topic, which you'll be focusing on. 
So can you share more about these extraordinary experiences? And I'm sure that it's in hindsight that you put this all together, right? Yeah. So Absolutely. what happened? Um, so there's really two, well, this is probably my fourth alignment where something extraordinary has happened. So the last three alignments has been just me coming into extraordinary circumstance. Um, the first time was back in 2018, I was living in Vermont and I had just, I think I've actually told this story on quantum conversations in the past, but I basically had this hunch that I needed to just quit my job in Ontario, Canada and just drive to Vermont, like out of the blue. It was like 5 p.m. and I drove <laughs> to Vermont and I landed at my friend's place, which was in the center of this beautiful valley. And as soon as I drove to, to this place, I felt like there was just this energy. It was so brilliant and pristine and beautiful. And the words that came to my mind was Pleiadian goddess vortex. And at that time, I didn't really know what either of those <laughs> energies were. I just knew that that was the essence of what I was feeling. And so I ended up staying and living there for a couple of months. And during my stay there, I began to communicate with this giant mountain that was across uh, the hill from my house. And this mountain started showing me these giant boulders that were laid all over the land. And there were also these massive boulders underground. And over time, they started telling me that the Pleiadians had landed there a really long time ago when they dropped off the Cherokee people. And that when they came to the earth at that time, they had already had a plan. They already knew that the Starseeds would awaken at a certain point and they had um, installed via consciousness these codes and information that I call light technology into the boulders so that we can awaken them at this time on earth to uh, support the planetary mission. Now there's a lot of reasons why they couldn't use that technology back then to eradicate AI and the reptilian presence on the planet um, and it was because you know through the stellar waves of time different amounts of cosmic consciousness is available right these are the uh, the yugas or the cycles that we hear about. And so they knew that there would come a time when the cycles would turn, that there would be a lot of cosmic energy, which means more expanded levels of consciousness that's able to be experienced. And that would be a good time for us to unify as a galactic um, unit to actually eradicate this distortion or evil that exists um, in our galaxy at this time. And so obviously this was a lot for my mind because I had just literally began, I thought like, seriously, that was literally like a week after we had our first quantum conversations, like not even, like I felt like having, I was like, had this conversation with you and it literally just like catapulted me into my galactic mission. So that was really cool. You know, that's why I got always get really happy when I get to come on and hang out with you because you just hold that special place in my heart. Um, so actually, eventually, that was like March of 2018. And, and when the Pleiades alignment started approaching, I actually met this Cherokee elder who was a groundskeeper there on that land. And he saw me and he just started crying and was like, you're a star person. Like, I see the star energy in you. And I was like, yeah, I'm from Andromeda. Like, I'm out here for some reason. I'm feeling these Pleiadian energies. And he's like, well, I'll tell you the creation story of my people. You know, we believe that these giant spiders came from the sky and we were dropped off here by the Pleiadians. So we are technically Pleiadian. You know, we we are um, a lineage holder of the Pleiadian people. And he even told me that he was from Tegeta. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but that's one of the stars of the Pleiades. And we hung out together on the direct Pleiadian alignment. He and I built this uh, sweat lodge together and we called it a sky lodge. And it was this technology that he was like, I've actually never built the sweat lodge like this before. Like you're bringing in these codes and we intended for that lodge to actually connect and, and open up a conversation with the Pleiadians. And that was really beautiful. I, at that point, um, started receiving information about how this is actually a timeline technology. Um, and basically, it's infrastructure in the multidimensional realms that when we truly awaken and begin to access those levels of consciousness, we can actually co-create and facilitate change in the third dimension. And they say that we need to pay attention to mandala effects because oftentimes that's how we can tell that we have indeed jumped a timeline. And usually this happens in really small increments. 
right? So maybe in one timeline, somebody was about to get really hurt, but we jumped into a timeline where, you know, they're now safe. And maybe that can happen on a mass uh, basis as well. Maybe we can jump into timelines where, for example, I had a client recently whose uh, family member was like, you have to take the vaccine or you can't come see us. And I was like, well, let's just do some timeline work. Like, let's just try to correct our energy from inside. And, you know, a month later I hear from her and she's like, oh, my daughter just like totally did a 180. And now she's like, you know, it's okay. Like, it's your choice. You don't have to take the vaccine. And so we could have really gone into arguing with the family member, but instead we went in and corrected the infrastructure and then created a higher timeline and walked right into that. Now that's just one example and we can see how we can use this technology to actually jump timelines um, in a greater way and this is kind of what i'm toying with um uh, yeah i've just watched that small mandela effect happen many 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 times and i'm waiting for the time when we jump into the timeline is like oh there's no cabal like we're just on heaven and i know that you know that could unfold in any way our human mind can't just create those stuff all we can do is really come into the highest vibration that we can be and go in with pure intent. And then what happens, you know, could be massive amounts of miracles or it could be slow increments. It doesn't really matter because we're giving our best. And so flash forward to um, last year on the Pleiades uh, gateway. And I feel at this point, I'm like, I can finally bring through the gift of what has happened. But um, Lauren knows that I actually had a baby and the baby came on the direct alignment, May 20th, 2020. And this baby, you know, two months before she was conceived, she was coming in to tell me that she was coming. And at the time I practiced these Taoist practices, which actually, you know, keep me from becoming pregnant. I basically just communicate with my ovaries. And I say, you know, it's not time and I'll flush energy through my ovaries. And this is actually my main, um, tool of contraception is that I believe that when we're empowered and we really recognize the amazing technology that these bodies are, we have levels of sovereignty that our common world, you know, don't have access yet. But these this information, it did exist on this planet. You know, I these informations I received from my Taoist ancestors um, who have, of course, mastered energy and soul incarnation in extraordinary ways. So it's it's not uh, new. But anyway, this baby came in and she came in as this massive angelic being. And she was like, hey, can you stop doing the practices? Because I need to come in. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not ready to have a baby. She's like, please, like, it's time. Okay, I need to come. And I just felt such a deep level of love. And just like, it wasn't like you have to do this. You know, it was just so much love and curiosity. I was like, okay, like, let's, let's see what happens. Cause I was getting so many signs from the reality that this needed to happen. And soon after that, she came to me again in the body of a full grown man who was a Mayan shaman. And I could just tell that he had so much power and magic inside of him, just in this knowledge of how life force works. And I was drawing all these correlations between the ancient Mayan knowledge, just receiving directly from him and um, between the ancient Taoist teachings and how there's actually a lot of crossover in, in the belief systems of the microcosmic and the macrocosmic and how universal life force creates through our human bodies and all of this. And so I was like, you know what? Okay, I'll stop doing the practices. And at that point, Brian and I moved to New Mexico to this land that I currently live on, this very magical um land which fosters mastery and i was immediately pregnant and over the course of my pregnancy kara was in complete communication with me like every single day meaning she would literally show me she would like she would literally say go and research orgasmic birthing and at that point i'd have no idea you know what that was and I would find a documentary and a book about it and I watch it and I would just you know in the end of this movie I saw this woman giving birth in a tub and she was having like the most cosmic orgasm as the baby came out. And I, it just blew my mind. <laughs> Literally, I was like, Phew! because every single depiction of birth I have ever seen in my life has been torturous and painful and excruciating to the point that I have friends my age who are like, I'm never having children because it's terrifying and, and scary. 
And for me to actually, with my own eyes, just literally see this woman, it's documentary of her giving birth in that way. I was like, okay, Kara, are you telling me that this is what you want? And she said, yes. And I said, well, how do I get there? And she immediately pulsed this energy through my body that started to release trauma from my womb and my cervix. And at that point, she guided me for the next, I don't know, five or six months in healing my cervix and my womb. In fact, during that time, I woke up at three in the morning and just channeled this whole class about multidimensional uh, womb healing and how the original divine female template operates with creational energy. Um, and actually that became a healing the womb course that I would actually like to, I don't know if I talked to you about this. Like, I think I did psychically. I don't know if I actually emailed you, but I would like to um, add that onto the special offer um, as a gift to anyone that um, wants to join the Pleiades gateway. Cause I feel like it's an integral part of what's happening. Um, and so flash forward me literally, uh, mentoring with this incredible master child who told me that she has been my mentor through many lifetimes like this is my soul's teacher um having had all that awareness and all of those experiences with her um i gave birth to her on the pleiades alignment on may 20th 2020 and i guess in the um plan of the mission she only stayed with me for nine days in the physical. Um, and that was an excruciating experience for my human self. Um, but I saw eventually that she had actually had to come into the physical and then weave back up in order to open this portal that because of this heart connection that we created when she was here in the physical that, um, so for three days after she transitioned, I, was just like i couldn't sleep i didn't eat i was just she took me to this place where my consciousness was literally one with everything i'm sure we all experience that feeling sometimes just like complete divine union where there's no separation and my body could only uh, sustain that energy for three days before i just plummeted into the greatest level of human suffering imaginable um it took me three months of really just licking my wounds and good thing I already have trained in all these ways of trauma healing that I really knew how to hold space for myself and allow myself to feel the human emotions and the grief and the pain and all of that. But soon I realized that there was this open portal inside of my heart from this realm to the other realm between me and Kara. And then later on realized that, you know, so one morning I woke up, it was like 5 a.m. And I just see this giant energy wave radiating from my womb. And all I hear is, Kara, 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 Kara. And I was like, your name is Kara. She's like, Kara, Kara. And I was like, you don't have to yell. She's like, I didn't know if you can hear me. You guys on the other side are kind of thick. <laughs> and so that name was really significant to her. And it wasn't till like half a year after all this transpired you know, when it all happened, I really just was not in a human state to hear anything. They would be like, this was like a divine plan. We had a plan. You agreed to this. I would just like give them the middle finger and tell them to go away. <laughs> just scream profanities at the sky, you know, all of that. But eventually I realized that I needed to claim the gift of this experience because it's not only been just a massive gift in my own life to witness the acceleration of my ascension, um, you know, really fully dissolving into divine cosmic consciousness and healing and closing and dissolving the rifts of separation that creates all suffering and all pain in this world. Um, realize that, you know, there's a few ways to interpret her name. So Ka is the light body and Ra is illumination or enlightenment or the sun. And this was a process that initiated my ascension into my light body. And Ka Ra are actually the two first syllables of creation. And that's really where she took me. And that consciousness has just been integrating. Um, and so I realized that, you know, when she said, I'm your ascension teacher, there was one moment, you know, I was, this is like three months already. And I'm just like on the floor dying. And she would fly over and she said, you know, are you ready yet? Are you ready yet to let go of the illusion? 
I'm like, how dare you tell me it's an illusion? I carried you in my body and this is real to me. And, you know, she really understood that and gave me space, you know, for three months. And at this point, she was like, Mama, it's time. It's time for you to step into the power and step into the gift and receive really what this experience is about for you. And when she said that, I just opened my heart just a little bit and allowed her to come into my vessel. And at that point, I felt my body literally ascend in frequency and all the pain, the density of the separation, the illusion was just dissolving. And the first time I saw her, she told me that before she was even conceived, she told me that she was coming to teach me how to materialize things out of thin air. And in that moment when I was literally my vessel was ascending into union, uh, into unity consciousness, I realized that if I really just allow my whole body to raise in my vibration to the place where I am fully embodying divine cosmic consciousness, that I would be able to just manifest something in my hand or perhaps fly or walk through a wall. And in that moment, I, I just had this aha moment and she giggled through the sky like, you know, there was a level of completion to, to the pain that we had experienced. Um, so flash forward, it's obviously just about to be her birthday, um, May 20th, the Pleiades alignment. And this year, the Galactics, um, I feel like this is really the first time where we get to really turn on the light ship or turn on the light technology because Kara was able to complete it with this loop and with this opening that she had created through the realms through my vessel. Um, and what happens now is that when I'm singing, I'll literally sing with her on the other side. And this was um, something that was really hard for me, even you know when this information first came in a few weeks ago, because when I would try to sing, I would feel this pain in my heart and I just start weeping. Um, and I realized that when I really am able to let go of that separation, like it's that's the part of the magic is recognizing that there is really no separation between the realms and this really opens up the portal to the other side to the higher dimensions where Kara is and when we begin to sing together it opens up this portal and that actually opens up the access to the Pleiadian timeline technology um and so yeah this is really the first time that Kara and I are going to be offering this. And I know, Lauren, you kind of witnessed this whole story unfold. So that's really cool. Um, but it's it feels so good to now bring this gift, you know, back to this community because it's just something that is so profound and so exciting. And these days, you know, when we go into that medicine space, that divine union energy is truly felt. And that's really what we're operating with and the vibration that we're wanting to share um, with everybody so wow z first of all you sharing your story helps so many others who've gone through something similar and i hope that you can really feel that i honor you for that journey So honor you. We have not spoken since a couple of alignments. And I thought of you so deeply. And this is the multidimensional connection and oneness. And I had a dream and your baby girl was in the dream. And right now I cannot recall the details, but I remember emailing and connecting with you and sharing that in hopes of the comfort that it brings. But now after hearing this full story, we see the bigger picture of this and what a cosmic journey, what a cosmic journey. Wow, wow. I was going to ask, you know, who, who is this being and, and, and why do you have to go through such tremendous pain, but you explained it all. And it's a portal of love 
And this is truly what we mean by portals within us, stargates within us. Yes, <laughs> it's that direct connection to the divine, to divine love, to God, to this unified cosmic consciousness that is just the vibration of love in its essence. And we all carry that inside of our heart, inside of our body, inside of every cell, inside of our awareness. And I feel like this is really the gift that all star seeds and all light workers and all people are carrying and bringing forth no matter how that love is translated and becomes in the material world. You know, at the root of it, we're here to love humanity and to love the planet. And it's so interesting how when we start to talk about different spiritual concepts and different kinds of things, you know, that core essence of divine love just sometimes gets brushed off to the side when it needs to stay in the center of our of all of our thoughts and actions. Um, so it's been a really profound journey and Kara is definitely uh, my ascension um, boot camp surgeon. <laughs> What a beautiful way for you to let go of the separation, the illusion of separation. So just that integration with that being and the love that you shared is so beautiful. When you said that you were, that the pain was so deep that even in your singing, you were crying. After this integration or recognition of this portal how were you able to sing again so it's like that here's the thing it's like it's not like a one-time process you know anyone that's gone through grief and through loss you know that there's all these waves and just as you think you're in the clear you know it hits you again and it's profound because this pain in me just represented the separation inside of me and gosh, it was hard to recognize that and to um, admit it because of course our human self, it wants to claim and it wants to, it wants to hold on to the suffering. I mean, a lot of times because I, that's just how we've gotten used to existing. We just believe in the separation so much that we believe that we have to suffer. We believe that we're down here without the presence of divine love and without God and it was really um, almost a check in, right? It was like so long as the separation existed in my body, I could not complete my mission. I could not go in and sing with her. I could not accept and embody this frequency of divine union. And that was his own process of needing to accept where I was at. You know, it's like, okay, I'm not, I'm not there yet. And that's okay. I'm not there yet. And that's okay. And slowly over time and over just tenderness and surrender and recognition and appreciation of the divine and of Kara and of this incredible journey that I got to partake in and really recognizing the gifts, right? Like we really were able to open this portal and, and between realms that is going to erase separation from humanity you know to to support humanity in that process it was profound for me to get to participate in that and as i slowly just allowed my human self to surrender deeper and deeper into that and recognize that you know every time that i did shed more pain and more separation and more loss i was actually getting closer and closer to her and thus getting closer and closer to divine union or being in oneness with God um, to the point where then there is no more separation and is reaching that place of there being no more separation that I'm actually able to remain in that place where I'm able to to do this work with her. So you can see how it has been a, a drill surgeon kind of scenario, you know, it's like, um, <laughs> here's exactly where you're at, you're going to feel it in your body. And this is all the places inside of you that are not yet in surrender and not yet in complete union with the divine love that's that's everywhere um and i definitely feel really proud of myself i feel like this has been just like the deepest initiation and i feel so honored that i now get to 
just keep this flame of union inside of me and, and share it and hold this space so we can all come into this space together because that is what humanity needs from us. Humanity doesn't need us to be know-it-alls or for us to be you know, the most gifted or for us to be perfect. Humanity just needs us to anchor this energy of pure divine love. And when we're in that frequency of pure divine love, we can actually hear in every moment what it is that is in the highest for our soul to offer to the world. And, you know, in the end, it's just such a great honor to be here with all of these amazing angels and starseeds on the planet right now and to really be a way shower for what is possible when we truly focus on the most important thing, which is our inner divine union. Remarkable, Z, totally, truly remarkable. What a beautiful journey. Thank you so much for sharing that. Humanity needs us to express this divine love and you've been given an experience and wow, thank you for sharing that journey. So, it's amazing. And I want to go deeper into a couple of areas that you mentioned on this journey. That lesson right there of shedding the pain and the loss, if that's all we have to do on our return to love and oneness and integration, then good, good riddance for that. All right. So this light technology and the timeline technology, when we have been saying, let's envision new earth, hold our vision of new earth, that really is working from the outset with this timeline technology because it begins with the vision. And I understand this so much more importantly now, why we need to keep our vision and hold our vision of new earth. So let's, let's jump timelines to that new earth of what we want it to be, what we want it to see. Let's first talk about jumping timelines you were working with the timelines. Can you explain exactly what we'd begin to do and hold our focus on to jump timelines? Yeah, so I feel that as um, a geneticist, so in the seventh density, I was a geneticist and being a geneticist in the higher dimensions is actually basically says that you're an angel because it requires for you to have such a deep level of reverence and devotion for creation to be to gain access to creational information on that level. And so by the time you're a geneticist, you're literally co creating the structures of the dimensions and of life forms and of planets. And to even reach that place of that level of co creation, you need to be in a certain level of alignment and resonance and love. And so from those experiences, I have this ability to perceive time space in structure in structures and in geometry. Um, and so when I look at the physical reality, it's a certain frequency uh, structure that carries different um, aspects and energies and personalities and etc. So right now we see that the world the predominant energies in the world is parasitism and war and separation and all these things. And that's kind of the backbone of what I call the false matrix. So a lot of us have these visions of the future or of this different reality where the structure of the reality is really different, right? So this is kind of like, for me, it feels almost like a maybe we can call it fourth density or something that's actually already there just above the surface of what is manifest in physical. And that is why we actually had to come here in the physical in 3D inside of these bodies to make that shift because we needed to manipulate the reality in the 3D to actually shift it into the future. Now, how do we actually do that? Well, every action that you make right say just like move my arm like this somewhere like that created a shift in the structure of the universe right in the structure of reality because i i as a creator being as a human being have shifted or created a shift in the reality now the more activated your dna the more close you feel to cosmic divinity the more you feel yourself as cosmic divinity, the more power you have to actually create shifts in the reality. And this is also 
kind of information that's coming in from my Taoist ancestors because there were these women, um, Taoist masters that learned how to shift reality at will through embodiment of cosmic consciousness and the mastery of their energy body. So I can tell why the Palladians chose me to relay this information because I have kind of have all these different backgrounds um, in cosmic genetics and in the energy systems of the human body and how it functions. And so I'm able to understand, you know, how this really works. And basically, if we simplify, we have to focus on our healing, right? Um, because in order for us to anchor this frequency, it has to come in through our vessel and through our consciousness and through our DNA. That's why we're here on the ground. Otherwise, we have just been upstairs and we would just changed things from upstairs. So we came down here and we're like, okay, we have to shift things from a 3D up because this is what's going to correct the architecture of all of the things that fell in consciousness in this reality. And so there's actually a few different components to working with the time timeline technology because the process of creation and a lot of you know channels and ETs will tell you that human beings are actually the projector of this hologram here in the 3D. And that is because we were genetically coded to experience ourselves as cosmic creator beings. Now, the extent to which that capability or that awareness is activated inside of our mind and our body is the extent that we can actually make a difference in the third dimensional world. And this requires a lot of mastery because it's not just about sitting at home and getting to the frequency, because when you do anchor in the frequency, you will get action steps in 3D. That is why, you know, here on the land, you know, we're not just sitting around meditating, we are working on a lot of different projects. Things are being built all the time. Things are being anchored in the 3D because it's actually us that are gonna create the systems that revolutionize human civilization. So it's one thing to sit at home and think, well, I would really like for the medical system to be different. It's another thing to completely embody the vibration of the new energy system um, of the new healing, <laughs> healing systems, and then going out there and actually creating a huge impact on the physical world through your actions, through your creations. And a lot of people think, well, you know, I have all these brilliant ideas, but I haven't put them into action and there's a block. Chances are, you know, the ideas are our higher half of our body is always connected to our higher self. We get a lot of visions, we get our mission, we get our downloads, and then it really just gets stuck in the birth canal because that's where all our human programming is. That's where all human belief systems are. That is where our traumas and the sexual distortions and the sexual confusion and just basically this lack of understanding of how these bodies truly work and how to really click into the reality and function with our life force energy, which we experience as our sexual energy to literally shift and create the reality and becoming a projector. So these are the different components that are involved in this in the um, four day ceremony experience over the Pleiades Gateway. And this is also why I'm going to gift the womb healing class, because the womb healing class is really something that goes deep into the original template of how human bodies are meant to create. And we go through past life healings of persecution and priestess hijacking and multidimensional uh, sexual abuse, like abductions, and all of those things are addressed. There's a reason why there's so much sexual abuse on this planet. And the predominant one is to basically keep humans from realizing that we are powerful creator beings. <laughs> and when we don't realize that, then that power can easily be usurped and be hijacked. And, you know, that's basically, you know, what has happened on the earth. So for these four days, we're going to be focusing on sexual healing. And the reason for that is, you know, without actually addressing these distortions and these lacks, lack of awareness of what sexual energy is and the shame and the trauma and the pain, we're not really going to be able to function with the light tech, right? It'll be same as just us sitting at home thinking about the future instead of birthing it and making it happen, um, creating it with our every movement and breath and fil filament of our being. So I'm going to be teaching workshops every day on the different dimensions of sexual trauma, which, you know, we kind of went into a little bit. 
I'm going to talk about the original codes of creation, which is how these vessels are originally created to channel cosmic um, creation energy properly in order to actually be synced into the organic matrix to actually begin to create. Um, and then after those processes, we are going to be doing a timeline ceremony together. And it is going to be as much for you on a personal level as it is for the planet, because every human being that is receiving this frequency who steps into their true creatorship is the impact that is actually going to create the new earth. And I feel like this is an energy that the second, third waivers are bringing in. Like I'm kind of the beginning of this, of being like, because for a while, you know, our job was to just sit around and get into a high vibration. And now we're getting into the wave of the starseed mission where we're really hands and feet on the ground. We're embodied creators. We're embodied in our pure divine love. And every action that we make, talking about new earth entrepreneurship and how the original um, templates of energy exchange happen and restoring the original uh, truth of infinite abundance through how we operate and how we design our businesses and the way we live and the way we exchange energy. Um, that is actually how the new earth gets created in the 3D is through those actions that we create right so right now you know these things are coming in for creating brand new foundations for the united nations for the healthcare systems for the who also known now as the womb health organization <laughs> so all these new templates are coming in and it's going to require for us to be in such a level of mastery to be able to actually fulfill those missions and that's really what i'm here for i'm here to support light workers to come into this level of mastery in order to fulfill our mission in a way that maybe our humans can have a hard time believing or conceiving when so if like if you know that you're here for something prophetic for something incredible for something maybe even messianic for something that will just revolutionize and transform this whole planet but it's been hard for you to truly believe in yourself and understand how to bring those gifts and that power of creation forwards i am here for you right now and we're about to do this thing this month um, really just to support planetary acceleration because it's so much fun you know life on the land here is so fun because everybody's just in their creativity and we're all just like oh my god that really cool thing just came out and it came out so easily and there's this joy of creation and that's really the vibration that we're meant to create in and so all of the dreams that you have they are ready to be manifest you just need a certain awareness and keys in order to unlock that. And I'm, I'm so happy and honored that I get to share these keys with you. The course that you're speaking of is available on the special offer link right here on this webpage. Stepping into our creatorship, this is, I know many, we've, we've talked about this recently. We feel that we hear the call of the heart. We get these ideas of inspiration and the ego mind comes in and stomps the muddy boots all over these heart-centered ideas. And so this is why listening to you and understanding the incredible incentive and motivation that you have in helping people bring forward these new ideas, these new earth systems is really inspiring. And it is so promising. I'll say that one more time. This brings us on the topic of energetic sovereignty. Can you explain what you mean by this? Because that really is the key, our energetics, isn't it? Yeah, so just want to touch uh, real quick on what you just said. You know, when we have this beautiful inspiration and something comes in and stomps on it, I just want to say real quick that that's actually a pattern that is resultant of the patriarchy. And that's a sign that the patriarchy still exists inside of your vessel. And that's an important thing to become aware of because when, once you become aware of it, you can immediately realize when that happens. So the inspiration to me feels like the inner feminine where you're connected to spirit and you get really excited and this excitement just flowers. And then it's job the job of the masculine is actually to say, 
How can I hold space? How can I create space? How can I create time? How can I create structures to allow for that to come into fruition? This is how the creation process is meant to work. Now, if your inner masculine immediately just comes in and say, we're too scared, you can't do it, you're not worthy, you're whatever it is, you can tell that there's a, uh, a break in the communication of these internal creational forces inside of you. And so the next time that happens, just become aware of it and retrain your inner masculine to react differently. Um, and that really brings us into actually energetic sovereignty is the way that I perceive energetic sovereignty is having true freedom, true free will. So people often say, you know, oh, the shitty things happen on this planet because there's free will, but that's actually a distorted understanding of free will. So for example, if a soul truly wants to travel and be free and just want to live in their van and, you know, travel wherever and be with the earth, um, and that's really what they truly wanted to do. But because of their programming, say their mom has always taught them like, oh, you have to go to school and you have to do this. You have to do that thing that you don't like in order to survive. These programs then influence the person to make choices. So even though you can say the person chose with their free will to work in a cubicle, that's not really free will. Like they make the choice with actually their human personality ego, right? So if a person truly had free will, they would recognize that there are all of these energies that are imposing upon the soul's freedom and they would act from a place of alignment with the soul. And that's what true free will is. And, you know, when the soul is actually in oneness with the unified field, the paradox breaks because actually what's best for each individual soul is what's best for everyone. And there is then this unity, this cosmic union consciousness that is the basis for a perfect universe. <laughs> and so when we talk about energetic sovereignty, we're talking about coming into perfect awareness in every now moment, where your energy is, how it feels, where it's going to, where your thoughts are going, um, why, who's, which part of you is thinking those thoughts, um, and consistently realigning yourself back into this place of being completely in alignment with your soul and with divine consciousness. And once you, um, so for example, you know, let's say somebody comes and knocks on your door and they're like, hey, and they tell you something really terrible. And in that moment, you could just punch them in the face, right? But where is that coming from? And can we become aware and make decisions even in, in small things in our life consciously in every moment? And really that's the level that we're getting to. And I think this is even a more advanced place than what yogis were able to facilitate and embody in past ages. Um, because, you know, we're not in a cave with no distractions, with no choices, with no surprises. We're here in this reality with all of these different things. And we're being asked to still stay in that center of always choosing and being very conscious of how we are exchanging and creating and sharing our energy and our thoughts and our consciousness. And I feel like this is just the level of mastery that we need to get to in order, because once that happens, you know, you can really tell, like, if you're in a relationship and you're like, oh, this is my twin, but like, you know, they're not loving your body as if you are the most holy vessel in the universe, then you just know that you're lying to yourself, <laughs> right? And like being able to acknowledge where we lie to ourselves and where we're not completely in integrity is so, so important because at the end of the day, it's not about what other people perceive you as. It's about just how in resonance and alignment with your own energy and how aware of your own energy and how you're applying your energy for the goodness of the universe um, and how effective you are at doing that. So hashtag rant. <laughs> I feel like I just like ranted there for a second. <laughs> no, thank you for that, Z. Thank you so much. We're really feeling into that. And it really is um, beautiful when we are aware and this is what consciousness is. And so we're all becoming more and more conscious. Would you like to share more about this beautiful four days of ceremony, actually full of processes that include frequencies and energies and medicines that help to release 
and heal and restore the sacred codes within us. Yeah, I think the final thing is just to be aware because um, these frequency, like I work with these angelic beings that brought various plant medicines to the earth and these frequencies work in very similar ways. I feel like as our bodies get lighter, you know, we become less and less dependent on actually physically consuming certain plants and we can just literally interface with the vibration and the light technology of what those plants bring. And so in these ceremonies, you know, people really go through extremely cathartic healing experiences, you know, sometimes even really intense purges and cries and um, that when we're really open to um, instantaneous healing, that even things that have weighed us down for decades can easily be shifted in the presence of angelic and divine grace. And that's really what we're doing. This is the medicine, you know, this oracle medicine. I'm really just a channel, an oracle for the highest forces of divine love to come in and to reach the places inside of us that just need that shift, that instantaneous miracle for us to really just be aligned to our mission. So I think this process is going to be three workshops and four ceremonies. And I'm going to do another little um, sound healing if that is okay with Loren. Beautiful. And this time I might go just a little deeper just to give everybody a taste of what's coming. These frequencies is kind of like, um, you know, they exponentiate through time. And so, you know, if you can feel these shifts and these healings in just like the 10, 15 minutes that you're in the space, imagine going exponentially deeper into that space over four days. Oftentimes, I find this is even more powerful than having a private session with me because a group field, you know, everybody's in the energy and we're directing all of that energy into our healing and into the planet. And so these events, you know, they're really potent and really it's just to, if you're feeling called, honor yourself like if you feel like this medicine is here presenting itself for you like honor yourself and create that space because you are worthy and you're deserving and and you are here to make a huge difference in the world and you can allow yourself to be supported by this support that is here um and i'm just really excited to see what can happen because this is actually the first time like i said that i'm actually creating a held container with kara and then creating a container over four days that is very intentional in deep, deep healing and timeline jumping on an individual and collective basis. Um, honestly, I've got my eyes wide open. I just want to see what happens. I know that is going to be so powerful and beautiful. And if you're feeling called, come join me. Um, I can't wait. To get comfortable and to sit back and relax and just know that we're creating a field of unconditional love that only the vibrations which are in your highest love and highest joy and highest soul embodiment at this time will move through you. And if at any moment it becomes a little bit intense, just breathe and come back to the space, out of the energy space, and know that you're so held and supported here.
take a deep breath down into the lower belly, expanding the belly as you inhale. Releasing, relax all tension. Bring these vibrations of love, of source, breathing them into the body, into the places which needs this love at this time. If there is any pain, any trauma, any distortion, allow these powerful frequencies of source to wash them clear and restore them back to the original divine human template. Bravo, truly healing, so beautiful, so angelic.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. My whole body has goosebumps feeling the beautiful frequencies. Thank you, Z. Thank you, Loren. I love you so much. Well, that was a beautiful experience of what you can immersing yourself in four days with this experience with Z. Thank you, Z. We are really looking forward to it. And what a magical time. And so it's during this gateway. What a tender time for you as this new integration and a birthday comes up. And everyone is so excited to be there with you. So we share our support right back at you. Thank you. And that really just means the whole universe to me. You know, my community has really been like my light through all of this. You know, I, I'm not going to let you down. And I'm here and I'm just really excited to move through this gateway and to be held by, you know, all of you and to get to share. So I'm truly excited. Thank you, Z. Thank you.